Stories are a result of choices. When characters make decisions and choose to undertake actions in reaction to their circumstances or the circumstances of others, a plot happens. In at least competently written stories, most of the events that occur can be explained as a result of the choices of the characters involved and a few who you may not see on screen, based on their characterization as well as the circumstances they find themselves in. But there's a level beyond that where we acknowledge that what we're experiencing is a story. The world, the characters, the narrative, all of it is the work of a creator that's crafted everything to match their vision. And when the story is complete, you can even trace the steps of that vision as everything comes full circle and you get to see why things happen the way they did. Now of course, on top of that, we must acknowledge that it's impossible to truly recreate one's vision. Beyond even editors, publishers, producers and networks that all get a say in what is and isn't allowed in the story, there are simple limitations of reality. Time, technology, talent, unforeseen circumstances that force the hand of the creator and they need to adapt to that. I acknowledge that. Now, some of you may ask why I began this video with a short essay about the nature of creators and their control over stories. Well, it's simply so you all understand exactly what I'm talking about when I say that the Miraculous Ladybug season 5 finale truly surpassed all my expectations. I mean, I thought I was prepared for whatever they could throw at me, but never in a million years could I have imagined that it could be so bad on such a conceptual level. It feels like someone watched my The Problem with Marinette and the Plot video and they came up with a solution I could have never imagined in a million years for the problem of Marinette being so unimportant in the aggressed plotline compared to Adrian. Write Adrian out of it completely so she's the most important hero by default. And I know what some people will say. The show gives us reasons why Adrian can't help Ladybug. He's a sentient being who can't go against his father. Every time he finds out his father's identity, they lose. He was infected with the fear of destroying the world. He's in London. Allow me to refer to the preamble I wrote for this video when I say that this is no excuse. Whoever is behind the brilliant decision to have the finale end like this came up with every single one of those decisions to justify it. In fact, those last two reasons I gave only happened in the last three episodes of the season for no other reason than to keep Adrian away from the plot. Also, newsflash, they lost anyway. And they could have written Adrian some character development so he could finally have his own breaking out of an akumatization scene. Adrian could have been a part of this story beyond simply cowering in a white room in London. The creators just chose not to include him. They chose to have the protagonist whose father is the main villain, whose mother is the main motivation for the main villain, and whose birth is basically the catalyst for everything that has happened for the last five seasons, and who is a central figure in the argument to talk the big bad down, not be involved. They involved all the irrelevant superheroes from other countries from specials that up to this point I was sort of convinced weren't even canon, but Hawkmoth's son doesn't even know how his father died. The Resistance was more involved. The Resistance. Because if there's anyone we should see rally to stand up to the forces of Adrian's dad, it's his classmates. Adrian accidentally mortally wounded his father, but I suppose we have to settle for him learning that information after his dad has already died. Gabriel died without finding out his son is Chat Noir, but he did convince Marinette to not tell anyone that he was the main villain who terrorized Paris for a year and to lie to everyone. And she does, telling Adrian that his emotionally abusive, neglectful, literally controlling father was a hero. A lie that only works if she just never tells Chad the truth about who Hawkmoth was as well, which she hasn't apparently by the time season 5 fully wraps off, so I guess this is just another secret she's keeping from him. Have we truly learned nothing from season 4? Do I have to make a part 2 of this video? I pointed it out in my video on Chad's arc in season 4, but everyone is keeping secrets from this boy, even secrets that are directly about him. Marinette, Kagami, Felix, Natalie, Plague. At this point, I have doubts how much they actually respect Adrian as a person. Honestly, they're just doing what Gabriel would have done, coddling him. This is supposed to be the end of the aggressed saga. It's over. And the most important aggressed biggest contribution was deciding he wouldn't do anything. Go fight with his lady? finally confront his shitty dad, even react to the fake broadcast of Chat Noir kidnapping him? Nope, gotta make room for the resistance and the knockoff Justice League. I'd asked Thomas Astruc about it, but he blocked me on Twitter cause I said I liked one of his tweets. No seriously. Then again, should I really be surprised? A big criticism people lay against this show often is how 
amazingly irrelevant shot wise. Ladybug is crucial for the defeat of every Akuma. Sometimes you wonder if Chad even needs to be there. Ladybug learns who the Guardian is and begins learning from him. Chad is only told after threatening to quit if he kept being left in the dark. Ladybug gets a power up to her creation abilities. Chad's power ups are relegated to fan fiction. I bet if you asked Hawkmoth to describe Chad Noir, he'd say something like my arch enemy sidekick. And honestly, would you even be able to blame him? But the truth is, it wasn't just Adrian. There's another important aggressor who wasn't involved. Felix. You know, the last miraculous holder, the guy who told Marinette he and Adrian are senti beings, the guy who all but spelled out that Gabriel aggressed his Hawkmoth yet somehow Marinette still needed to see him transform in front of her eyes to get it. Where was he? Why wasn't he here? Honestly, if Marinette somehow completely forgot that he pretty much announced that Gabriel aggressed his Hawkmoth, what even was the point of his character? His girlfriend was in prison too, but he was nowhere to be seen because even he has a more interesting connection with Gabriel than Marinette. Literally, this isn't even in the script, I'm just brainstorming it right now as I record it, but here's an idea. How about since Adrian apparently can't break out of the prison himself, just have Felix decide to come and rescue his girlfriend and then accidentally break Adrian out in the process? Boom! It's that simple. Like, I, yeah, I would actually like for Felix to be involved more than that, but you know what? I would have liked for him to appear like at all at any point beyond the very end. I've seen people try to justify this by saying Adrian will get a bigger role next season. I remember people saying that last season too. But this was it. This villain was his dad. If he was irrelevant in the finale of this arc, what hope does he have when the villain is Lila, a decidedly Marinette focused antagonist? If you don't get how bad this is, imagine if at the big battle to defeat Lila or whatever her name is, Marinette is stuck in Italy for the entire thing and is just Chad and whatever Lila calls herself duking it out over what's best for Marinette because all season, Marinette has become just more and more helpless against Lila so Adrian has to do it for her. Doesn't sound great, does it? In fact, it sounds kind of disrespectful to the main character, doesn't it? And this season has tried to write Marinette into the protagonist role of this conflict. As Adrian's agency was shown to be more and more of an irrelevant factor to the story, Marinette and Gabriel have been coming more and more into conflict because now Gabe really wants Adrian to date Kagami for some reason. I guess it's because she is now a senti being. Speaking of Kagami suddenly being a senti being, Tomo was just a plot device to get Gabriel more stuff for his evil plan. What does she want? Who knows? Why and how is her granddaughter a senti being? Who knows? Why are they so fixated on Kagami and Adrian getting together? So they can oppose Adrian and Marinette being a couple so we can stretch this romance out even longer. How does she even trust Gabe to keep his end of the bargain at all? Who knows? No one knows she even worked with Hawkmoth except Natalie and Lila. She came in and left with no consequences and we don't even know if she accomplished whatever the hell she wanted because we don't know what her goal was. It's funny that the first episode of the two-parter has a nightmare scene where Marinette rescues Adrian as some sort of princess from his father dragon. Adrian being demoted from sidekick to a damsel in distress would have been bad enough. But you know what? At least in the nightmare, he was there. Also, with context of the nightmare, I'm forced to wonder if Mari agreed to keep the secret because she can't handle the guilt of possibly being blamed for Gabriel's death if Adrian found out what happened. That actually makes me kind of get why she lied. I still don't agree with it. A lot of people say that fanfiction does this show better than the show itself. I think that's a bit uncharitable to say when you consider that creating a show is a lot more complicated than being the one person writing a fanfiction. With that in mind, it is my personal opinion that every version of the confrontation with Hawkmoth I've seen in fanfiction was better than this in concept because at least Adrian is in the same goddamn country. Like, why was he in London? Despite all the build up as Gabriel insists that he must be there, being in London doesn't actually protect him or Kagami from the plan. In fact, Gabriel specifically targeted them. All the drama about how urgent it is to keep him in London so he'd be safe and all it amounts to is nothing beyond Adrian being too far away to even realize the finale is happening. Look, I've seen the internet. I've seen the cope. It'll lead to development next season. They're building up for something later. Ladybug will bring him into the fold soon. Chat is definitely important. I have notes. 1. This is what everyone said last season. 2. Unless this version of Gabriel Agrest comes back to life, 
I don't care. Adrian's end perspective of his whole controlled by his father plotline was Gabe seriously emotionally tormented him for his own good. Then he locked him in a room so he couldn't escape. Then Adrian had a nightmare and gave away his chat ring. Then his father died off screen and Hawkmoth was apparently also defeated. And Ladybug showed up to tell him that his dad was a hero and now he's wondering if he'll ever be as great as Gabriel. Am I supposed to think that's a happy ending? And so what's going to be the next part? And then he finds out Ladybug lied and his father was evil but of course he's never actually going to meet his father again. 3. Considering how much focus he got in the arc with his last name attached to it, most of which was done while he and Ladybug were the only heroes around, how much focus do you actually think he'll get in the next arc with a dozen other heroes running around pretending to be characters? Honestly. I've even seen people say that it would just be too traumatizing for him to find out his mom is in the fridge in the basement, his dad is a super villain, and that his dad is dying because of cataclysm. And all I can say is, then why is his life like that? If Adrian is really going to be too traumatized by all that, then why did they write all of it? Gabe didn't need to be dying because he touched cataclysm, Hawkmoth didn't need to be Gabriel aggressed, but he was written into it, so we have to deal with it. It's not going to become less traumatic with time, is he just never going to learn it? Are we holding off until he's emotionally mature enough to handle it? What's going to happen in the next few seasons to make that happen besides him getting used to a happy lie that's about to be shattered? And is Marinette the only one allowed to handle traumatic situations? Is the Sunshine Boy so fragile and special that he can't handle the reality of his life? After 5 seasons, the protagonist is not mature enough to handle the story of his life? Then why is he even here? I mean, the things that have happened to Marinette are also unreasonably traumatizing but she's still dealing with it. Is Marinette the only one who's matured enough to handle reality? Because that says more about how Adrian's been written than anything else. Also, is that really going to be the conclusion of the Adrian and Gabriel drama? Gabe gets in a confrontation with Marinette for his conclusion, then Adrian gets in a confrontation with Marinette about what happened? Is his family situation just going to be an excuse for more relationship drama and conflict between him and his girlfriend? Why the hell is this teenage girl this family's goddamn emotional buffer? And really, how much drama could this possibly cause? After the last 5 seasons, I don't believe the writers actually have it in them to have Adrian be upset with Marinette for up to 10 minutes of runtime. She'll cry and correctly blame herself for failing, then he'll forgive her, absolve her of all wrongdoing, then go back to being her faithful sidekick like nothing happened, standing in the crowd with the rest of Ladybug's Pokemon. Yes, I know something could come of it, but honestly, having watched the payoff to this 5 season long storyline, I don't see why I should expect more. I really don't have faith that this show could actually give this a satisfying payoff. Honestly, the more I type, the more I just can't believe this is the end. I think that's a big part of my problem, the continued insistence that the storyline is over as if there isn't such a massive significant loose end. I swear, the ridiculous communist utopia fantasy where the villain is remembered as a hero and everyone seems to have gotten everything they want that the show ends on feels like the 80% mark of a finale right before the hero breaks out of the illusion and gets back to the fight. All that build up about how the wish can't be made without dire consequences and will literally destroy and recreate the universe, but it happens anyway, including the absolute dumbest premise for an educational institute I've ever heard in my life which, let's be real, only exists to keep all of Marinette's classmates together in the same school. Monarch 1 Marinette stupidly detransformed in front of him and ultimately completely failed to do her job as the guardian and the holder of the ladybug and even the temporary holder of the black cat. Surely, surely that can't be the end of the storyline, right? The continued insistence that this is the end of the aggressed arc when it obviously isn't is an issue. We didn't get the biggest payoff of the story has been building to and what we were told would be the worst outcome happened. But now everyone is smiling and the main character is acting like it's okay as the weapon the villain used to torment the planet is reformed into a statue, praising him for his non-existent heroism. As the son he abused to the very end goes, could I ever be like such a great man? And you know what? I don't care if it's undone in the very first episode of season 6 and we get everything I'm talking about there. If that's the case, they should have done it in this season instead of dragging it out to the beginning of what's supposed to be a completely new arc. It'll just make this ending a lie. Like, even if season 6 is about undoing Monarch's wish, then this isn't actually the end. Look, Adrian isn't my favorite character. 
I think Kagami is. And on that note, if and when Tomoe is confronted, Kagami better be within at least like 10 miles of Marinette confronting her mom for her. Apparently, that's a high bar for me to set. Where was I? Oh right, Adrian isn't my favorite character. But he deserves better than this. The ultimate conclusion to his relationship with his father is just going to feel more drama between him and his girlfriend. Like I know Miraculous' fanbase is kind of built on its romance, but still. The truth is, the writers wanted Bognoir versus Hawkmoth, which I'll admit was a good fight. In fact, if you can just ignore the Adrian factor, this finale actually has some great moments for Marinette. Up until she flushes her brain down the toilet, but never mind that. The writers wanted this, and they did everything to make sure it happened, be it stripping Adrian of any good conclusion to the story or even letting him take part in it, reducing him to an object that doesn't even realize he needs to be rescued, while playing up a supposed rivalry between Marinette and Gabriel by creating a situation where Gabriel really, really, really wants his son to end up with someone else for some reason. They chose to write that story. And I chose to write this video in response. We all make choices. Except Adrian, he just gets lied to by everyone. But you know, it's for his own good. And don't even get me started on how the show ended Chloe's arc. Really? Her enabling and massively corrupt father gets to play the victim and be praised for pretending he isn't responsible for her behavior before shipping her off to continue to be emotionally abused and neglected by her mom. These are just my thoughts on how the season 5 finale treated Adrian, condensed into a very brief 2800 words. And now I'd like to hear yours. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Tell me in the comments and don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content and check out my Miraculous Ladybug playlist for more videos. Thank you and good day.